Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, uh, as the video title suggests, uh, we're going to be talking about advanced level physical fitness. And this is the first time I'm, I'm doing an interview, and I'm, I'm very uh, lucky to have uh, Lieutenant Murphy with me on the channel. Lieutenant Murphy is someone that I got to know while at OCS. We were in the same uh, Delta II platoon. And Lieutenant Murphy scored a 99 in physical fitness at OCS. And he's someone that I got to know while at OCS, someone that I admired for his, you know, his leadership and his, his physical fitness ability. Um, and so I am very fortunate, and you guys are fortunate, to be able to pick his mind today. And so we'll start off, just jump right into it. Uh, Lieutenant Murphy, um, maybe you can let the audience kind of know a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from, uh, you sort of what was your uh, athletic background, uh, you know, in the early days, and we'll just kind of start there, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Yeah, like you said, um, I'm Lieutenant James Murphy. Uh, I'm from Orlando, Florida. Uh, started out young kid athletically, spent a lot of time in team sports, um, mostly baseball, football, as, and then I was I went into high school, transferred into a little bit of track, but mostly wrestling. Uh, wrestling was that main sport that I like really fell in love with, really challenged me mentally, physically, I think set me up for physical challenges in the future. Um, always had an inclination and a love for physical activity and for sports. Um, transferring from high school to college, I uh, went to Florida State University. Uh, during my time there, I, I spent a lot of time doing intramurals, like football, um, just, just trying to stay in the team environment. Uh, as we all know, I think a lot of people feel that loss of team when you leave um, school, and that's why a lot of people join the Marine Corps. But um, physically wise, in in college, I was really, really focused on um, a lot of powerlifting and bodybuilding style stuff. Um, when I graduated high school, I was a smaller guy, still right around like 150 pounds. Um, Right now, I'm sitting at about 195. Now, you know, granted, that's seven years later, but at that time, in my early 20s, you know, about 2021, 20, um, I was just putting on about 10 to 15 pounds pounds per summer in muscle to just gain size and strength, and I think that set a really good baseline for you know my future now, especially transferring into more of like endurance, more taxing on my joints and things like that. I think building a nice base layer of strong tendons, joints, things of that nature is like a really good thing that some people kind of stray away from at times. Uh, graduated with a psychology degree from Florida State University, moved to Atlanta, Georgia, did some corporate work for about two and a half years. Uh, during that time, always stayed active. Um, I did some triathlons, um, ran probably less than I should have because we all hate running. I mean, we don't all hate running, but... It kind of sucks. <laughs> um, triathlons were fun because they kind of challenged me in terms of the biking and the swimming and uh, different kind of scenario, put me out of my comfort zone, which I enjoy. Uh, and then, obviously, my my training was s stable. You know, I, I kind of go crazy if I don't go to the gym or work out in some, some matter uh, of the fact. But it kind of switched gears and became more focused as we got towards OCS, pr OCS prep. And I think that's what we're going to dive into uh, on this here. Yes. Uh, one thing uh, One thing I'd like you to maybe talk about and something we talked about off camera is maybe you could tell us a little bit about, you know, wrestling and, and combat sports and sort of, you know, the mindset and how that has helped you, you know, in where you're at and maybe even prepping up to OCS. You know, we talked about how jujitsu is kind of becoming a, a, a very popular thing. And so maybe you can talk a little bit about the mindset and, and sort of what wrestling brought to you um, sure. in those days. Yeah. So I think, and I speak for most all people who've participated in these kind of sports, like it, it is it is something that is not for everybody. It's it's difficult. It, it kind of throws you into the depths of your own mind uh, in terms of like the physical punishment that you take because you're not only, you know, as a wrestler, you, you got to have good endurance. You got to be disciplined because you're cutting weight usually. So you're hungry or thirsty. You can't eat. You got to be explosive too. You got to be strong and kind of all got to tie it in together. So I think what it taught me was like, there's really, and it sounds cliche, but there's really like no, there's n no governor on what you can do physically. It's just, it's, it's just right up in your head. 
like I, I, I vividly remember as a kid, I think I was like a sophomore and I was in a practice and it was, you know, if anybody's been a wrestler, they can attest like wrestling coach shuts the windows, shuts the doors. We're in sweatsuits, just sweating it out. It's, it's, it's a sweat fest. We're just getting it. And we're doing some kind of terrible exercise. I think we we're doing like bear crawl Indian runs or something. And I remember just like every part of my body wanted to stop. And I realized that I could just separate my mind from myself yeah. and just like almost put it like a bubble away from me yeah. and like watch myself do things. And I realized like I can, I can do whatever. So how much of uh, that, how much of that mindset do you think you had to use at OCS? We'll just kind of talk and sort of put that same. Cause one thing I remember about you, the first thing that sticks out about you at OCS was we ran the initial PFT and I think your mile time was sub 18 minutes and you finished number two. But I remember you ended up in the final PFT finishing number one. And so tell us about, you know, sort of like that, that super competitive mindset. And, you know, like you said, all those things you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, I think being competitive is important. Um, I think it's something that kind of, is bred a little bit um you kind of you can you can definitely find it if you aren't always you know kindling that competitive spirit but um yeah like you said showing up uh I wanted to be you know that keep the 300 pft like always wanted to get a 300 pft every time I step up to get to a pft and one of the guys in our platoon was just a really fast, super athletic dude yeah. who smoked me on it. I think he ran like a 17, 16, 17, 20 something. Shout out to Lieutenant Sai. Yeah, shout out to Lieutenant Sai. <laughs> Absolute beast. And I, I think I came in like, it wasn't, it wasn't a great one because I know Lima remembers the first week of OCS is in processing and all you do is sit around. You do nothing. You don't, you don't get to PT. You don't get to do anything. So, um, no excuses, but um, I think I ran like a seventeen fifty two or You're something, still it. just under. Which, you know, but for my personal standards, I wasn't super stoked with. Fair. I was happy I got the three hundred, but I knew like for a fact that I wanted to get better on the final PFT, which was a few weeks later. And you know, as we get into like the POI and like how physically how that stuff is gonna affect you, which I'm sure we'll get into here. We'll, we'll talk about how your cardiovascular fitness is just going to up itself, like naturally being there. I'm sure we both experienced that. That yeah. OCS is going to work you, and you're going to get fit. But it's just a matter of making sure you show up fit so you can get even more fit. 100%. And I, I think that's the best segue. Um, let's start. You know, the moment that you realized that you wanted to go into the Marine Corps, as you've already expl explained, you had this athletic background. You, you in college, were just continuing to do, you know, athletic things, team sports, staying just, you know, active. Um, but so at the moment you knew you wanted to go into the Marine Corps, what did your training routine become? Um, you know, and maybe we can get detailed and, and you can maybe you can start macro in terms of like what was the timeline um, how many PFTs do you have to run for your OSO, sort of, and then what did your training routine become? Uh, you know, let's say like nine. Well, how long? How long? What the time was it? Yeah, I can. I can get it. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I, I, um, I'll give you macro and then I'll give you micro because I'm pretty um, detailed in my exercise programs. I, I've written a lot of programs um, for friends and for myself and stuff. So okay. uh, I was in the pool for about nine months. Um, so longer than some, I think, uh, I don't know how, how long were you in your pool? Um, so honestly, uh, September, uh, September is when I met with those for the first time. And then I, I got up on the board and that, like that winter. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, so I was pre, cause you know, Jag, it's a little different. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Like yeah. Yours might be different. And then got selected okay. in the April, March. Yeah. So I sat down with my OSO January 3 of 2023 and showed up to OCS September 9th so January 3 September so nine months exactly nine months yeah exactly <laughs> okay, okay. so um when that decision well the decision had been made for a while but it was just a matter of Before waiting meeting with the OSO the yeah yeah the decision had been made I'd been wanting to be in the military for a long time and so just never had pulled the, the trigger training, like when you made the decision and then meeting with the OSO, and yeah. then meeting with the OSO to shipping. Yeah, so prior to, I would say my regular workout schedule, five days a week usually, 
um, predominantly weightlifting. Okay. A lot of weightlifting, like classic squat, deadlift, bench. Um, you know, I would do a CrossFit workout probably one to two days a week. Just to keep the cardio and the strength. Yeah, exactly. Like so to mostly do. your objective was get size. I wanted to be big, like big and strong. I, at that point, I wasn't really too worried about like aesthetics. I was just like, I wanted to be strong okay. and stay strong. Um, but yeah, I would do, I would do a CrossFit workout just because those, those workouts are real fun because they like take you into the suck. Like r- those real difficult ones with like the assault bikes and we can get into that stuff. I, I, I love that kind of stuff. I think it's great training if you mix it in correctly. And Where I were you t- getting those workouts from? Is this something you were making up yourself or? No. So, um, just online, okay. um, CrossFit wads. I follow a lot of Instagram accounts. Um, that just post CrossFit wads, workouts of the day okay. all the time. And I'd see like a hard one and send it to my friend and be like, Hey, you want to do this one on Tuesday or something? And you guys would just do it there at the university gym or was it? A so this was post college and my buddy had a basement gym. Okay. So he had free weights, assault bike, uh, GHD setup, pull ups. Um, he just had everything there. In his yeah. Head. He built a, a home gym. Okay. And, and you I, guys were going like in the afternoon after work. Yeah. After work. Yeah. Okay. About like two hours for the workouts. Dependent, okay. dependent. Um, but I'd say probably an average of two hours. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was majority focused on, like weightlifting, and uh, uh, not really like super focused on cardiovascular strength. Then once I knew that I'd be training for the PFT, um, I have like a like a I already had like a long set of strong back muscles, so I knew that I was gonna hit max pull ups. Period. Like I didn't really need to work on that. Yes. Which we can talk about if you need to work on pull-ups. I know that's an issue, and there's plenty of good programs and ways to do that. Ways that I increase my pull-ups to 30 pull-ups from, like, 25 yes. to 30. I would like to um, do those. Yeah. Myself, I'm still below 20. <laughs> yeah, we can, get, we can get to that. Um, but I knew the main thing was the run. Okay. So I, I've, I've run in the past, but I was 50 pounds lighter at that time. So I knew it was going to be, like, number one. My number one thing, I was just sitting at about 205 at the time. So I knew I needed to cut some weight. Okay. And I needed to cut some weight off and sacrifice that because it wasn't like dedicated to the mission. Like at this point, it's like mission focused. Like, like whenever I go, whether that was in May or September, I didn't know, but I knew, hey, like these are the parameters that I need to to f- freaking walk in, like being good to go at. Yeah. And so these are the things that I'm going to train for specifically. Okay. Because like. Yeah, you can, like, train to be a tactical athlete or whatever the heck you want, but, like, you're showing up to OCS, and the measures that they give you are the measures that you need to be – they're going to be measuring you at. So by Marine Corps standard, you need to be focusing on your pull-ups, your plank, so your core strength, your back strength, and your cardiovascular strength, Um, as well as, like, if you don't have good leg strength. Like, leg strength, I believe, drives cardiovascular – like, if you have strong legs – the only thing you have to battle is your cardiovascular system because your legs already have the strength. Okay. So my workouts then switched from mostly work, mostly lifting to almost all cardio work. So average week I do Monday, I do a six mile run, always outdoors. Don't run on the treadmill. Do not run on the treadmill. Don't it's, you're not going to be as fit. You can, you can do it if you have to in a pinch, but everybody there's an outside. Everybody can go run. So I highly recommend running, especially in a hilly area. It's going to make you way, way tougher. So did you just jump right into the six miles? Because mm-hmm. you were like, I have the physical background. Like running six miles is not about to be an issue. No. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't fast. Um, what, what, and with my training, it was like uh, I had three days of work for my running focus. One day, easy. It's called LIS cardio, low-intensity um Low intensity. Oh my god, I forgot what list stands for. Um, but it's the, basically what it means is you're working at zone three, where your heart rate is at like fifty to sixty percent of capacity. Okay. So you're running slow. So I was running like nine, ten minute miles, just chilling, just cruising, because what you're doing is you're building the engine. Like that's the that's the uh, analogy that's made for that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, you're building the engine so that when you do go at higher speeds. You're, you already have that going. Uh, then the other two runs I would do is I would do an interval run with um, with timetable, and then I'd do a distance set interval run. So I would go out one day, and I would do, okay, today I'm going to do 10 minutes on at a 6-minute 15 pace or a 6-minute 30 pace or whatever pace you set, and I'm going to do 10 minutes on 
five minute rest, 10 minutes on, five minute rest, 10 minutes on. So it's not determined by distance, it's determined by time. And you would do that for how much time? Like that run would be an hour? Three sets, three that's sets. it. That's all I really needed to do. You don't have to go overkill with that. And remember what you're training for. You're training for three miles, not 12. So the most miles you should be running, in my opinion, in one sitting is five to six miles. You don't have okay. to go over that. Okay. You, you, you really don't. Yeah, I mean, even at OCS, it's like the max we ran is five, five miles. miles. Yeah. yeah, the most you will run at OCS is five miles. And so I would do a day like that, and then uh, I would do an interval sprint day. So it would kind of change. Like I would switch every two weeks to not get bored. But I would do mile repeats, or I would do 400-meter um, repeats. And can you explain that? Because I actually don't know what yeah. that means. So a mile repeat is basically you're going out, and you're running a mile as fast as you physically can. And then you stop, and then however long your break you want till you feel good again, within reason, you do that, and then you do another one. Okay. And then you take the break, and then you do another one. That that's the long distance. That's interval. That's the so interval. that's for your your heart rate is working at capacity, VO two max like How similar is that to one that. Different than the ten minute one we were just discussing. So that's it's in the, they're in the similar realm. Okay. But with the one that I would do time based, I wouldn't run it as fast. I would okay. still run fast, but the, the rule of thumb for intervals is you want to run them faster than race pace. Okay. So if your race pace is six minutes on the dot, that interval one that I was doing, I would run it at 6.30, 6.45, somewhere okay. in there. With the repeats, especially if I was running 400 repeats or 200 repeats, which are in meters, so it's getting shorter and shorter, instead of like if I was saying it for a mile, it would be 1,600 repeats, 1,600 meter repeats, like – the those 200 or 300 400 meter repeats i'm running at a 520 pace like okay. blasting past like what your race pace is because you're getting that short distance and then you're getting a rest and short distance and then the rest so that you're training your body and your mind to run at race pace because one of the biggest things is committing to a pace yeah. in your head as the race goes on like it's gonna hurt it's gonna suck but if you commit to the pace in your head you could just turn it off and just tell your legs to shut up and keep going. Okay. Like that's that's really what you're training your you're body doing, to do. You were doing each of those workouts, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Yeah. That's why I split it up okay. so my legs wouldn't get like – and I'm not one of those people – some people will tell you you need to run 15 to 20 miles a week. In my opinion, you don't. In my opinion, you don't. I was running an average of 11 miles a week, 10, 11, sometimes 12 or 13, depending on like if I did an extra run or something for fun – but most of the time, I was keeping it to about 12 miles a week. Okay. And I did just fine. Um, also, I also tethered that in with like um, in between days. So like Monday, I have the run. I would do a core workout after my run. So okay. I'd do a quick, you know, plank and just do like an ab circuit. You can, you can look up an ab circuit anywhere. Like 30-minute um, ab circuit? Not minutes. even 30. Okay. Like just like a... Um, personally, I got my ab circuits off another, mil, um, Marine Corps open program. That's just free. It's the Marsoc prep book. Okay. So the Marsoc prep book gives you all these kinds of workouts and I'll they, have that link the yeah. And you, you just Google it, check the link and they have like all these other workouts, obviously for Marsoc prep, like swim and thing and rucking and things like that. But they have circuits that are all like a lot of body weight okay. and a lot of, uh, core. So like I picked up a, a core circuit that I liked from there okay. that had like front planks, side planks, other side planks, Turkish get-ups, knees to chest. And like it slayed me the first time I did it. So I just did it till it wasn't hard. Okay. And then after that, I would change it up with some other ones. So I would, I would make it a rule because I hate doing core workouts. I, I can't stand them. I really don't like them. If I don't make myself do planks, I will not do planks. Okay. So I would make it a rule where every time I ran, I had to do a core workout after or else it wouldn't be complete. What were you doing on the Tuesdays and Thursdays? Tuesdays and Thursdays was a lot of strength, but not heavy work. I was not putting my joints under heavy strength. I completely stopped back squatting totally. Okay. Didn't back squat, didn't barbell bench press, didn't do anything heavy. I was doing like... Dumbbell bench press? Though, was I, I was good. doing some dumbbell stuff, yeah. Okay. And, and I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying if you're... You think about your mitigating injury at this point. Like you're putting your joints under a lot, especially if you're starting a new program where this is new for you and new for your body. And you're not going to need that kind of strength at OCS. I was doing a lot of circuit training with pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, okay. um, you know, 
stuff like CrossFit centered kind of stuff where I was doing like rower and assault bike and, um, you know, still doing accessory work with, um, you know, dumbbells like single arm dumbbell press for your shoulders and, you know, flat bench with, with dumbbells, but just not going heavy, like doing light tend to be like higher rep as well. Um, people will argue about hypertrophy and all the kinds of things where you like high rep should mean muscular uh, endurance, which is true, but you don't need to go overboard with it. So I was doing a lot of limited rest um, and something that I still carry today. Now I really think is important is like limited rest in your workouts. Like if you're doing something that's not super heavy load, then you're, you're, you should be like, why, why am I sitting around for three minutes in between sets? Okay. That's just not – that shouldn't be a thing. Like, was that like because you also were trying to get the cardio while doing mm-hmm. the lifting? Exactly. So you can turn it into a cardio workout almost at the same time. Okay. You know, so that was probably – and then as I got like a few months in, because uh, I was adding one ruck per week as well, okay. I highly recommend for everybody – Buy boots if you are committed and you are going to be shipping to OCS. You know this is going to happen. Buy OC, buy um, Marine Corps issued like good to go boots that you like, and you ask your OSO, ask anybody in your pool. They'll recommend good boots. They'll probably tell you to get Dana Reckonings. Make your own decisions as you maybe become a Marine, but I think starters should just get Reckonings. I mean, they're they're a little expensive. They are a little expensive, but if 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 you can afford them. I think it's a smart move. I think so too. The reckonings that, and depending on when you're going, just probably get the tropicals, honestly. But you can think about the Gore Texas maybe later. But they'll issue some at OCS if you really need them if you go in the winter. But get a pair of boots. I got mine in January, and I did one ruck a week. So it doesn't have to be heavy. Nothing crazy. I wasn't doing, you know, seventy pound rucks or anything. I bought a cast iron plate on Amazon that has twenty five pounds, and then I would throw some 10 pound weights from my apartment gym in my backpack okay and just go just, walk just a, a salt pack not pretty much salt okay. pack not a full main pack no hip belt none of that so put through that on threw some pants on to get used to wearing long pants and i was training in the summer so it was hot so it was good conditioning and i i started at three mile just started at three mile maybe not everybody can start at that maybe start like a one and a half something like that i vividly remember like messing my feet up on the first ruck I ever did. Okay. And I told myself I was going to do three miles, so I literally sh- ranger shuffled the last two miles because my right toe skin was shaved completely off of it because the first time I'd ever worn them. Okay. Yeah. So they were, they were pretty destroyed. So working that in once per week is not only going to condition your shoulders, your traps, and your lower back for rucking because you're going to be doing rucking at OCS, and they're not going to prepare you for that. That's one thing I think – that really messes people up and especially transferring here into tbs i know that's kind of like a thousand foot view but eventually if you're serious about this and you're committed and you want to visualize your success then you're going to visualize yourself here at tbs obviously accomplish the mission first but get here like it's not going to stop it's only going to kick up like you're only going to you're only going to hike more so i think conditioning your shins there's a lot of people who get stress fractures at ocs conditioning your shins conditioning your knees your low back your shoulders, your traps is important. So getting one of those in a week, if you can, or one every two weeks, if that's the only thing you can do, and it doesn't need to be anything crazy, you go out, walk two miles, you'd be just fine. You're just getting your, your feet used to this. I think that's important. So another part of the workout routines at OCS, I felt like there was running, and then there was body circuit workouts. Mm-hmm. There was sort of nothing in between. And um, I want sort of two more questions and then we'll sort of wrap things up but what part of your training do you think or what would you recommend for people in terms of how to be able to perform at those because I mean I'm sure you recall there's one candidate who we were doing the circuit and he went down Mm -hmm. and that was the end of his OCS career yeah so in terms of and I wasn't necessarily working out with you but I'm sure it was something that was not extremely difficult for you compared to other candidates so um, what can you recommend for people about those workouts? Yeah, um, I would say that information is free. Um, I, I spend a lot of time on on the internet, like looking at blogs and 
um, looking at YouTube videos and the same the things don't kind of some a lot of things change at OCS, but the things that don't change are the workouts that they're going to do. They're not going to put weight on you to do things. It's going to be a lot of calisthenics. It's going to be a lot of pull-ups. It's going to be a lot of planks. It's going to be a lot of running. It's going to be a lot of I mean we we probably what we only did like like two or three circuits. Two or three circuits, yeah. yeah. Where you're doing like you know, Russian twists with a med ball, dips, um, pull-ups, things like that. Like other than that, you're going to be doing more like actively involved kind of PTs like training for the CFT where you're going to do like fireman's carries and buddy drags and things like that. Um, also train for the CFT. Like if you suck at like if your shoulders are weak and you can't ammo can press, like that's a problem. Like you should probably be doing ammo can presses, which you can do with a dumbbell. You just put it in front of your face and, and press it, you know? So, um, prep, like I said before, prep for the things they're going to measure your success at. Like they're going to measure your physical breakdown at OCS as it stands now is your PFT, your CFT, your O course, and your E course. Like those are your only grades. You got a 99%. And I got a 99% because I didn't get a hundred on the E course. I was gonna ask which one the was. E course. Yeah. So I, yeah. And it's really annoying because I'm one of the only people who got a hundred on the O course, but the and E course is you, weighted way heavier. What could you, what in retrospect, what should you have done? What could you have done? Maybe about 100%. Honestly, uh, in retrospect, I would have gone w- way less hard okay. in a lot of the workouts. Like like, like some of the runs and like the VO2 max trainings and like the regular fart lick runs and stuff. Like I would have gone way easier to preserve my body a little okay. bit because at the end, my knees were a little beat up. Okay. My knees were beat up, especially because we hit – like for y'all who don't know when you're doing an event at OCS like the O course the E course you run a PT for it you run a practice for it and then you run your time to run so you do it a bunch of times and the E course at OCS is no joke like it's it's very very difficult like taxing on the knees um, a lot of pounding up the hills yes. and through the water jumping off of things yeah it smoked me it smoked me for sure and at that point, it was like the very end of the POI. We had just finished a lot of hiking for Suli 3. We had finished e-course prep, e-course uh, timed, which is not for grade. And then we did like a VO2 max PT the day before, like two days before. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. And I, for some reason, sprinted so hard. Like I, did, I was so stupid. Yeah. I just got caught up trying to be competitive. And I just lost sight of the big picture. Which, if I could go back in time, I would tell myself, like, hey, like, this is not the end-all, be-all. Like, this is not the most important thing. Like, sit back a little bit. You can lose this this one. You can lose this one. Exactly, yeah. Well, actually, that's a great segue into what will be our last question. Because, you know, for someone like myself, going into OCS, it was like, I have to get through this. But someone like yourself, going into OCS, was like, I'm going to be the best here. Yeah, that was like what I wanted. So, let's talk to that person cuz that's who this video is for. Uh-huh. Like what advice do you have for that person? Um just closing words to that person. Yeah, I mean, all in all like it's just what you prepare it's how you prepare like your preparation will show in in your performance. Um if you put in the work, you stay dedicated and you stay focused and you come in with like a hungry attitude to the training and and you are like consistently like there probably should be nobody beating you physically at your oso if you want to be like a pt stud like that's not necessarily like perfect like and i'll be like you might have a bunch of pt studs at your oso which is great because then you can run with them yes you can run with them you can train with them you can make them better like there was one dude at my oso who was like kind of close and we would train all the time but it like now that I'm here at TBS, like there's a whole bunch of dudes who are just like physical specimens, like they're beasts, and and whatever you're deficient in, like you can find somebody who will make you better at it. So like, you know, we're about to go hit the gym with one of my good friends, a lieutenant, who like, hey, he's a good runner, but he isn't necessarily super strong. He wants to get strong, so he's asked to go to the gym with me. So we're gonna go get strong, 
And then, like, my, one of my roommates is, ran cross-country in college and runs, like, a 15, 50, three-mile. So, like, whenever he's ready and around to do, you know, runs, like, I hit him up because I want to get slayed. I know I'm not going to keep up with him, but it's going to make me faster. Okay. So, like, you got to make sure that even if you are beating those around you and, like, sufficiently, like, scoring well, you got to challenge yourself still. Because, like, you're going to get to OCS, and I guarantee you you're not going to be the fittest dude there. Like, I was not the fittest dude there. Like, in some way, somebody's going to edge you out in something. So, like, keep that in mind. If you lose and, like, I say lose, like, don't let that, like, beat you down your mentality. Like, it's a long 10 weeks. It's a very, it's the longest 10 weeks I've ever experienced. <laughs> so, mentally and physically. And no matter what outside exterior I put out, I was not having a great time. So, like, you know, it, just stay disciplined just stay focused and like put in that hard work and like be ready like if you're if you if you're, if I'm talking to the PT stud like if you're not running a P 300 PFT what are you doing like if you want to be that guy why do you not have a 300 PFT like yeah, if you don't have a 300 PFT you're not <laughs> you're just not <laughs> and I'm not saying that, that to to people like like plenty of dudes will can and will graduate with a with not close to a 300 PFT. Absolutely. It is not the end all be all. It doesn't mean you're a better leader or a better person or a better Marine just because you run 300 PFT. But if you're just trying to show up to OCS to win the physical fitness award, which was what I was trying to do, which I failed at, but I tried to do it. If you're not showing up like crushing the standard, then, you know, maybe adjust your expectations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Murphy, thank you for coming on. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah.